Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod for the Barstow. So what this mod does is it takes every coupe version of the Barstow and gives you a convertible option. Now there are actually two different convertibles you can choose from. Some have the windows up, some have the windows down. We're going to start with one that has the windows down because I think the windows down looks a little bit nicer than the windows up. Now as for the way it performs, it actually feels very similar to a normal Barstow. You might think, oh, removing the roof is going to totally ruin its structural integrity. Well, the Barstow already was kind of a floppy vehicle to begin with, so the lack of roof doesn't really change it much to me. Like, I would say the King Snake convertible is comparable, if not equal to the King Snake coupe, which isn't always true. Sometimes mods will have it where, like, it's literally, you chop the roof off and it feels like it drives awful. and that's totally a legitimate mod. It just depends. What is the author going for? Is he going for it back in the barn? Billy Bob and Jimbo, they cut up the roof and made a convertible. Or are they going for more of a, this is a production vehicle that is available as both a convertible and a coupe. This one is most definitely the later. And I don't want to spin out again. I already spun out once. All right. So, uh, since we're on the drift track, I was trying to drift a little bit through there, and that's what caused that first spin out a minute ago. Now, let's just go ahead and try to crash this. I thought it would fly a little bit there, but the dirt slowed me down. Okay, right into the sign. There's a crash, but it really doesn't affect the parts we're looking at, so let's respawn this. And we'll try to flip it to actually get some roof damage, although we are in a really flat area. I'm not exactly sure where I could flip this thing. I'm thinking maybe if we ride up on one of those rocks, it might flip it. No, that did not flip it, but it did damage the front end. Still drivable, so we're going to go for another uh, attempted at flip, and this will ride up on that hill and then kind of go awkwardly at it, and hopefully that'll do something to flip the car. There's a flip. And just as you would expect, it looks like the windshield deformed really fast once it actually made contact. It is not strong and you do not want to be in the car when it flips over. But what about the ones where the windows are rolled up? You wouldn't think it would make a difference because how much weight could a window possibly hold? But it's one of those things I do want to test. And to test it this time, we're going to do it a little differently. We're just going to go into the uh, gravity menu. We're going to turn on negative earth. So you can see very clearly this one has windows. And now it doesn't. So it looks like that one fared pretty much equal to the one with the windows down. So that's exactly what you would want to see. Now we can try to drive around the super flat version of the Barstow a little bit. Which is probably even worse to control than the other one. Just because it's now damaged and a convertible. And it has the big V8. Which is kind of hard to control. It's funny. Because of the way this car is set up. You have one wheel skids. Like it's not two wheels you're just leaving skids with one wheel almost all the time like if we did a donut right here you'll see it's just one wheel lighting it up the other one's doing nothing so left wheel nothing right wheel all the work and then you switch going to the left left wheel doing all the work right wheel doing nothing just kind of funny like you'd think this thing would make a great burnout machine but it can't really kind of unfortunate anyways back to normal driving we're gonna cut through here and uh try to roll it naturally see if it would have worked or not if it doesn't we'll just crash it if it does oh well ah it didn't work so it's a good idea to crash it into the roof and now it's driving awkwardly so it's time for a fresh vehicle and maybe even how about we go to a fresh map that's funny right there that did not look like a hard impact but main engine is broken so we're gonna pop over to good map to do some actual crash testing the first test I want to do is a structural strength test. So what we're going to do is we're going to get one convertible, one coupe, and we're going to drive them both over the suspension test directly ahead of us and see how they compare. So once we get there, we're going to try about eight times slow-mo. That should be slow enough where you could actually see how the suspension goes over things. And you can watch for any sort of kind of crazy looking flex in the vehicle. And I see a little bit of wobble, but no huge flexing. I would expect the coupe will do better than this. But we won't be able to know that for another 30 seconds or so. I'm doing my best to try to keep this thing in the center. It's close enough where I can do that consistently. That is what's important. So like right here, for example, just you can see it's not exactly straight. Yeah, it's it's leaning down in the back, but you can see like very clearly it's not a straight line. That's what's important right there. It's actually flexing as we go over these. And how far are we? All right, we're almost to the end, so we'll watch it all the way to the end. We got like two more blocks. And then we're going to try the same thing with the coupe. We're going to get the coupe with the exact same engine even. We're going to get the 291 V8 Road Sport Package. 291. 
It's funny if you say the engine size is like a, a number readout. So here we go for the exact same task in the slow-mo, the same amount. And what we're going to see here probably is that this car will bounce a little bit more, but the structure will be a little bit stiffer. And so far, that appears to be the case. Like, you notice when it's hitting those bumps, it's really popping off of them, where the other one kind of coped with them because the frame itself was so wobbly. Like this one, I can't even keep it perfectly straight. We're kind of swinging off to the right side, which is going to give us a little bit of bias in the test. I'm trying to straighten it up a little bit. That's probably close enough right there, I think, to uh, make this test work out. So yeah, you can pretty easily see a difference here. I think we're going to do a couple more tests with this. One of them that I've done before that I really like is the put the car on a block test and increase gravity until it breaks in half. So let's uh, line up the cars for that. So for this test, what we need to do is we need to get one convertible, one coupe. We already got the coupe. Now we're going to get the convertible and we're going to go over to these blocks and we're just going to teleport the car right onto the block like so. Stay on there. All right, that looks good. Then we're going to do the same with the other one. We're going to put it on this block right here. That's going to stay, right? All right, perfect. Now we're going to go ahead, open up the menu over here, go to environment, and then we're just going to slowly increase gravity. We're going to focus on this one. When we see something happen to this, we'll take a look at the coupe. So, so far, not much. Okay, there we go. You could definitely see a little bit of bend right there. How is the coupe holding up? I don't see much bend there. Maybe a tiny, tiny bit. This one's very visible. Okay, keep going. Keep going. All right, there's the snap. It just snapped at 72.5. This one, we got some bend. But it has not snapped. Thereby proving the coupe is stiffer than the convertible. Even here at about 100, it still is not snapped. The convertible's touching the ground. This one is not yet. We're going to keep going until it snaps, So Keep going. Actually, kind of interestingly, there's the snap. I was going to say that one's bending and not snapping. And it snapped in the front, not in the middle. Because this middle part is so strong, the weakest part is actually here where the front subframe connects to the uh, regular part of the frame over here. The weak part is uh, right here where you just have a small piece of metal in the door holding it together. So let's go ahead and get these cars reset. First we'll go earth gravity on the environment. I actually tried to hit it for both cars, I only needed to do that once. I'll set that one down. Over here, we'll set this one. Do they actually drive like this still? This one does! It's beautiful! Remember a long time ago I made tacos? Here is a taco car! It's returning. Gotta love taco cars, they just look so ridiculous. Go over that suspension test. Okay, we are uh, temporarily distracted by the taco convertible. We will come back to what we were doing originally later. For now, we must drive the convertible. It's actually surprising how well this thing drives perfectly straight pretty much and going 70 miles per hour without much issue braking maybe a little bit worse handling is definitely awful i'm curious did the coupe do the same yeah the coupe can drive too even though it broke in a slightly different way it does not stop it from driving all right now for the test we're actually going to do we're just going to do a quick head-on collision between the two vehicles we put this one here that's funny, because I reset it when it was all bent up. The, the game makes it look like it's popping a wheelie when you spawn it up. Like, yeah. It's not doing that at all, but it looks like it is. So anyways, we're going to do the same for this one. We're going to watch it pop a wheelie as we respawn it, hopefully. Yep. Pop that wheelie. It's totally fake wheelie. Fakest wheelie you ever saw. And then, for convenience sake, we're going to use the AI to uh, crash these cars into each other, because they can do it better than I can. They can get, like, a perfectly head-on collision with no effort. I... I can't even do it with effort. Now the cars are different, does not matter. We're not worried about which car pushes the other or anything like that. We're just gonna compare the collision and they should have the exact same forces applying to them. That's the nice thing about crashes like this. That was a pretty good crash. And now we're gonna have to make sure we focus on the side they got the majority of the impact when we do the comparison. So we look at the right door on the yellow car and compare it to the right door on the green one. And it looks like both of the doors bulged out a lot yellow one just a bit more how about the other door this door is pretty straight this one has a very visible bulge so convertible held up a little bit worse than the impact and these guys gotta calm down they are just revving their engines like a bunch of angry pigs and it's just like calm down the race is over y'all can't go anywhere you're crashed into each other and then for the uh actual frame itself you can see this one it's like curvy how's this one nice and straight 
So maybe not the strongest convertible body, but hey, back then, you know, they might not put as much effort into uh, strengthening the bodies of the cars compared to uh, modern day cars where convertibles are often very close to being as stiff as the uh, non-convertible models. So go ahead and reset both of these. Ah, yes, and of course, as we respawn it, we get another wheelie. You know what? Since we're getting those wheelies, why don't we just pull out the drag convertible, which is just as fast as the normal one, but it doesn't have a roll cage. Beautiful wheelie. And we're going to go over the suspension test thing. Oh, so smooth. And now, fly. It's amazing just how fast the drag version of the car is compared to every other vehicle in this game. It is so fast, and I don't think that's going to drive anymore. Yeah. Not a chance. The engine still revs, though. That's kind of surprising. So now let's go ahead and try loading things into the car. I think the one with the windows up would be the best to load things into. So we'll grab the 353 V8 convertible, which has windows rolled up. And then we are going to load... How about a hay bale in it? Will the hay bale fit? I know it's pretty big, but we have a pretty big opening, too. Let's see here. Now, nah, hay bale is just a little bit too big. So what can we load instead? Well, I know a steel barrel will fit because that thing is uh, surprisingly compact. It weighs 430 pounds, so you could actually say, realistically, that is two Americans in the back seat. That's like about average, actually, probably, because Americans are pretty fat. I don't know the average weight. I know that I am below the average weight, even though I'm not even that skinny. Anyways, let's try two barrels in here. See how they stay in there. Perfect. And now we try to drive the car with the extra weight. See if it can hold it in there good. And initial impressions. Yeah, it can. Like those barrels are in there and they can bounce around a little bit, but they're staying in the car. They're not like falling through the floor or anything like that because the floor wasn't made to hold weight. Doing great. And I rolled it and now the barrels are going to fall out. So, you know, what? just go ahead and reset all of that and pretend that never happened. I like how easily the barrels go in there. That's really nice for when you want to do stupid things if you could just put the barrel in there nice and gently and it's excellent and i have a kind of crazy idea i just thought of with another mod i still have installed from the last video so if you don't know what the last video was it had explosions and i'm thinking this video could definitely use some more explosions first a little bit of hard cornering with all this weight I mean, having almost a thousand pounds in a car does change the way it drives you can see this thing's like struggling like, I'm going full power right here, and it's like, I can't do it, YBR. I can't do it. I'm too weak. So, anyways, what I was thinking of doing, we're going to spawn this up over here. We're going to grab the hay bale, move it over a few feet, and we're going to spawn up an 8 series. We're going to get the bomb from the 8 series. We're going to try to pull it out of there. And apparently, the 8 series decided he's going to take a nap. So, he's going to take a nap as I put the bomb in him. Oh, God, that sounds terrible, doesn't it? Yeah, let's put the bomb in the napping dude. Yeah, open up the cargo doors. And we're going to see if we can just yank the bomb out of here. I've never tried this before, to be honest with you, but we're going to see what happens. There we go. I've got the package. You don't have to be gentle with it because it activates on a hotkey. So we're going to just set it inside of Barstow. Go to 100 times slow-mo for this because the explosions happen fast. And then we go boom. Oh, the dash. It's okay. It's like, wait, it's recoiling. See, this is 100 times slow one. You can really see it. I like that. Although we might want to speed it up a little bit to 8 times slow mo now that uh, the dash stretching has happened. Now we just see the yellow explosion everywhere, making it hard to see what's actually happening. But we can look at the outcome there. Now, why did I do that? Because normally it's really hard to put things inside of other cars. It's so easy to do it there. I had to try that out. Anyways, I think that will do it for this video. Until next time, this has been YBR. I'll see ya.